great honour and privilege that um, Bishop Joel is here. Thank you, Dave and Caroline, for bringing him. And thank you, Caroline, for um, playing with, with Shelley and worship. Um, Bishop Joel's from Uganda. It was, what, five years ago, the first time we met? Was it five years? Five or six years, because you were at my home. On a Wednesday night, it was the first time that, that we met. And, um, when, and we're just blessed that he seems to come along to us whenever he's here in Australia, and it's just wonderful. Um, Paul Evans was healed of, of a back injury when Bishop Joel prayed for him, I think, in his second or third visit here. So he's got, you know, he's, he's, he's full of the Word of God, he's full of passion, he's full of the Spirit of God, and we're just blessed to have him. So Bishop Joel, come. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm really grateful. Let's appreciate Pastor also for, for the great work in this place. May God bless you so much. And God bless everybody for engaging in and loving the Lord. And thank you for the great worship this evening. God bless you so, so much. I'm grateful to my hosts as well. They are wonderful people. Amen. Uh, I come from Uganda, as Pastor said. She, she visited us uh, some time, uh, if some years back. I think 2012. Yeah, it was 2012. And uh, in September, 2012 in September, she preached powerful messages. Yeah, powerful messages every place we went. And up to now, people are still asking me, when is, when is she coming back? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I've been on her all the time, up to now. <laughs> and, uh, hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name and we thank you for being grateful to us. We thank you even for tonight for bringing us together as your children in your house. We pray that you may speak to us again tonight. And that your presence will increase in your house. We thank you that the sick shall be healed. That the oppressed shall be set free. That people will be set free in their mind, in their hearts, and in their bodies. That you shall minister to us holistically through your word. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read a text from Mark chapter Five and the starting from verse 21. I love this passage so much and because God did wonderful things through his son Jesus Christ. Uh, in this passage, among two people who are suffering, who had problems, one had a problem at home and one had a problem right there. But Jesus ministers to both of them, and uh, they went all celebrating and thanking God. So that is Mark chapter 5 and verse 21. We are reading from NIV here in my Bible. I'm going to read the first 21 and 22 and 23. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Let us stop there for a little while. We shall continue reading. But this is Jairus. He's got a problem at home. Just as life has challenges at home. You know, problems occur. You know, problems are never invited. <laughs> they come uninvited, you know sicknesses are never invited you know you find yourself sick you find yourself I mean 
I got here, I left my family well, all the boys are doing fine. I left home on, on Wednesday of May and I got here on Thursday, the 18th of May. And the following day, I'm, I'm, I'm checking, you know, how are you doing? Joshua is very sick, you know. Oh, and Joash is sick. And, but I left them, they were fine. You know, problems are not, I'm invited. Sickness, no one invites sickness. Oh, sickness, come and touch me here. <laughs> Nobody. Everybody says no to sickness. Everybody says, I don't want. Sick don't want sickness to your life, to your children, to your husband, to your, your family members, to your friends, you know, you, to anybody, you know. But here we see that Jairus' daughter became sick and the situation suddenly became so intense. You know, and, uh, and they tried, I believe, whatever they could and nothing worked. And then they heard that Jesus is in town. You know, Jesus wasn't that far from where they are, so he decided to go. You know, let me tell you, much as we may have challenges and problems here and there, let me tell you, Jesus is not far away from us. Hallelujah. Jesus is not that far away from us. You know, he's, uh, he, he's, uh, he, he's right there where you are. You know, it's a matter of connecting by faith. This evening I'm going to be speaking on the principle of faith. You know, because faith is important to each and every believer. You know, we are believers because we have faith in God. Amen. We, we believe the scriptures, you know. So we are believers because we are following Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior. You know, but it is possible to have people, believers in church, and yet they are not believing. You know, uh, for instance, when, when Peter is in prison and, uh, and the church, the Bible says, and the church got together and they prayed in the night. They prayed earnestly for the release of Peter from the prison and the bible says that they uh, the, the angel of god came to peter when he was in the inner prison and you know uh, and, and he was in deep sleep you know he didn't have even the strength to pray you know he didn't even have the idea that i can pray and i can get out of here out of as a result of prayer but thank god for the praying church you know you know that's how much power prayer really works you know that even if somebody has lost hope totally if some people gather together and pray something happens and that's really what happened people gathered together and they prayed and the bible says that uh, uh, the angel of god from on high you know uh, peter it wasn't peter's prayer you know, he's a great apostle, we love him. He's a mighty man of God. I mean, when he is walking through here, all of the lame on this side walk. All of the blind on this side open up. But, but this time around, he's been caught in a situation whereby even his faith has run low, you know, and his prayers, you know, he can't make any prayer here. And the Bible says that the angel came and hit him in the side. You know, he was in such deep sleep that even the presence of the angel couldn't wake him up. <laughs> How about that? You know, even the, can you imagine the presence of the angel in your house, in your room for the angel to show up in your room and, and you can't wake up because, because the angel carries a presence of God. You know, but still Peter had lost hope you know why? Because James, his fellow apostle, had been beheaded, you know, and there was no hope. The guy that had arrested him had prominent authority, Herod, you know, so you couldn't just come out of his hands anyhow. And so he had lost hope, and, and, and so the angel had to hit him in the side, bah! And then he woke up, and the angel said, follow me. And he follows him, and then they go out of the prison, and they go out, you know, and then they reach somewhere, and 
Peter is thinking that he's seeing a vision. And it wasn't a vision. It was a reality. And when the angel left him, that's when he only realized that he's not seeing a dream. He's in a reality. And then the Bible says, and he went to the people where they were praying. You know, he went right there. And then he knocked on the door. And there come a girl who was on the door way. And uh, she opened the door. And here Peter was. And excited as she was, she ran back inside among the intercessors. <laughs> the believing intercessors. <laughs> the believing church members. And they are shaka tarababa. Release him, O oh God. Send your angels from heaven and release him now. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I see him coming out. <laughs> release him, God. They were African prayer intercessors, you know. They prayed African. Yes, my God. You know. <laughs> Yeah, he's coming out. Yeah, I pull him out of the prison. <laughs> they went African. You know. <laughs> and then the angel say, I mean the girl said, stop praying. Peter is here. They say, you are crazy. Stop it. <laughs> Believe us. <laughs> God can heal your cancer. Really? You don't have them in Australia. We have many in Africa. God will, God will fix your problem. Don't worry. Oh, maybe. <laughs> but every Sunday he's in church. Is a believer? Yes. Is he believing? <laughs> no. But you can't misplace his or her Bible. He knows where the Bible is, you know. <laughs> but when you are talking about things that need faith, <laughs> you don't involve him or her. But he has a lot of faith in his doctor. <laughs> oh, my doctor said. <laughs> he believes too much in the doctor than the word of God. And they say it, I don't go much in that side. <laughs> you know, and they say it, no. And she came back and said, he's the one. And she went back at the door and it was Peter. And she came back and told them, stop praying, Peter is here. And they said, it is his angel. <laughs> Check your Bible. It's there. <laughs> they are believing intercessors. When they are storming heaven, oh my God. They are powerful than a scud missile. But when you tell them to believe what they are praying for. <laughs> they don't believe it. You know, so faith is a very important principle. In the church today, we have a big crowd of followers all around the world, but very few that are believing the word of God. It reminds me, I mentioned this somewhere else, even Karen and David had me. You know, this preacher in Af in Uganda has a very large church. She's a woman preacher, and she's preaching this Sunday. Thousands of people are listening and shouting, yeah! You know, in Africa, we can even get those chairs and lift them up. <laughs> shouting, amen! <laughs> and then we say, preach it, pastor! <laughs> and then we say, receive your miracle! And people shout, I receive it in the name of Jesus! <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, this preacher is preaching and, and then people are shouting, Amen! And then this lady shouts, Amen! Hallelujah! And the next girl, lady next to her, asks her, what did she just say? 
And the girl says, I don't know. I'm just, we are just supporting the gospel. You know, So faith is, Bible says this, is the substance of things hoped for. And if you were to explain, to find what the word substance means, go in your dictionary and dig out just the word substance. It means a lot. But faith is the substance is the essence, is the core of things hoped for. So when we come to Jesus and we miss faith, it's like we are missing everything. It's like we are missing everything. Because where would I be having come to the Lord in the 80s and missed faith, where would I be today? You know, I could, I can remain a good Christian in Uganda and love people and I know I'll be in heaven someday, but suffering in life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sometimes we can suffer for Christ, but with faith we can overcome challenges. We can attain victory. Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, uh, Philippians, that, uh, you know, that I've, I don't think you have to have attained it. But one thing I do is that I press on towards the goal so that I can attain it, that which Christ Jesus attained for me on the cross of Calvary. How can you do that? How can you press on without faith? You do it by faith. So I'm encouraging every church member today in the church, let's read the scriptures. Because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hearing by the word of God. The word of God creates faith in us, in our lives. I mean, if the word of a human being comes with a negative power that can discourage someone and turn away from doing something simply because somebody said. You know, what about the word of the creator of heaven and earth? How much positive power does the word of God carry? Great power. You know, some people leave companies because their fellow worker said so and so, such and such. And they believe that. I think it's high time that we believe the word of the Lord. And so, I am talking about the subject of faith. And every, every person is heart. And the Bible says, and, and Jairus left home, and he ran to bring Jesus to his home. Because there was a trouble at home. If you look around your home, there will always be something that needs Jesus to come in. Did you get that? There will always be something. Maybe at work, maybe at this, maybe, you know, or it may not be a crisis, but we need Jesus to intervene every day. And so he heard that Jesus is in town and he said, the Jesus that is in town, I will need him to come home. You know, and bring him home to my address. That's like bring him in your heart. And he becomes part of your life. And he takes over your life. And he dominates and becomes king over your life. Because when he enters the house, he never leaves the house the same again. He turns it around. He brings hope where there is no hope. 
He brings joy where there is tears. He brings prosperity where there has been poverty. He brings faith where there has been fear. He brings healing where there has been sickness. Somebody say amen. amen. He brings peace where there has been weariness. He, he turns life around. And you know, so Jaira says, I'm going to bring him home. And I want to encourage you tonight. If you are here and you have a problem at home, take this Jesus home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take this Jesus home. And when you take him there, point him to the problem. Point him where the problems are. And say, Jesus, I need you here. I need you to... It reminds me of the story when Pastor Suzette was preaching in our place. And, uh, and she, said, uh, she said she was poor. And when she was saying this, the African Ugandans were saying, Really? Can white people be poor? <laughs> They were looking at her in amazement. I was her interpreter, I can tell, you know. And she said she opened the war against poverty. She said, no way, I have to break this. I think she got her children, they went in the back, they dug a pit, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't know what they tied up. You know, they wrote poverty on it and they buried the pit and they said, poverty, we are burying you today. <laughs> that is an act of faith and since that time their life turned around you need to do something Jairus did not sit home and say okay daughter you sleep there on the, your deathbed I am sitting here we are waiting for <laughs> we are waiting for Jesus to come no you need to do something Bible says that faith without action is what? Is dead. You need to do something about the situation, about the challenge. You need to make an action. You read the word of God. You know, tell the pastor about it. Tell somebody, what can I do? Give me some act device. You know, make a step ahead and you'll see the move of God. You know, Jesus said to these to these ten, you know, when you read Luke chapter 17, you know, the ten lepers who came, you know, Jesus saw them, they saw Jesus from a distance, yeah, and, and they cried out to him. They said, Jesus, have mercy upon us. And, and, and Jesus, from a distance, he told them, go and show yourselves to the high priest and offer the sacrifice that is commanded you by Moses. And they did that. And the Bible says, as they were going, they were cleanest. Did you get that? As they were going, they acted upon the word. When Jesus spoke the word, they didn't stay. They didn't say, what are you saying? We need the healing right here. Just do it here. No, they moved. And it says, and as they were going, there are some miracles, there are some glory, there is some breakthrough, there is some victory, which you will never see, not until you have started going. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. You need to start the going. And while they were going, they were cleanest. <laughs> How I love that. I come from a very play, very poor place in Nazigo. Did I take you to my dad? I think I didn't. You know, my home village. I took you. Good. You know, you know, the, we we were poor. That the poorest of the poor in our village called us poor. And if the poorest of your village call you poor, you are poor indeed. <laughs> and that's where I come from. I said to people that we had enough poverty for us and it was overflowing that we could lend it out. <laughs> and when we lend out our poverty, we say, it's okay, you may not bring it back. We have enough anyway. <laughs> My dad had a bicycle 
you know, I never saw any vehicle turning to our home in my whole life when I was there. He had a bicycle. We thought it was a bones of an animal jointed together. <laughs> it had only one pedal that you could turn it like this. And I could take it uphill, 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 as if I'm crippled. And people come out of their houses and they are shouting, Kakembo is taking us uphill. <laughs> Such a poverty. For my dad to even buy a new tire of that, of that bicycle, he couldn't afford it. He could work for the used tires, you know, from other people, the tired ones. He couldn't afford to buy a new wheel. <laughs> but when I received Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I said enough is enough to poverty. I say something must happen in my life. Somebody shout hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And then I shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And he said unto me, go and show yourself to America. Go and show yourself to Australia. Go. And as I was going, I was cleaning the Somebody said hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You got to do something about it. <laughs> you know, in 1984, when I came to Jesus, I, I go back to my home village, and there are some people that we came to the Lord together around the same time, and they are nothing changed in their life. I mean, they are saved, they are born again, but somewhere, somehow, they never connected. In the real power. Yeah. You get the point. Yeah. There is something they never caught. The power of faith. Changes your life forever. Yeah. I normally say. That faith presents you. With something. Faith will never present you. Empty handed. Yeah. <laughs> At least you will give a song. Oh, you will sing a song of praise. You will release an anointing. You know, you cannot walk by faith and you are n have nothing. There is something on your life. There is something you carry. I tell you, by faith, you are carrying something. Even as I speak right now, some people's faith is raising up to do something in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said that when you have a little faith like that of a mustard seed. What will you do? You will speak to this mountain to leave its place and go into the sea. That is how much powerful faith is. You become a mountain mover. You level places for the kingdom of God to add advance. And you know how faith comes? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And he said, come and touch my daughter. Lay your hand on her. And heal her so that she may live. And Jesus said, I will come. And he started going. And Bible says, as he was going, let's read it. Verse 25. What happens? 25. And the woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. Now listen to that. And the woman was there who was subject to bleeding for 12 years. 12 years. She's under the situation. NIV uses she was subject. Yeah. <laughs> Other translation, there's one which says well, the woman with the issue of blood. Is that King James? Yeah. How does it say? Somebody read for me. Had an, issue of blood. Had an issue of blood. This one says was subject. I mean, <laughs> you know, before I came to Jesus, I was subject to that poverty. When you are subject to something, you are under that. 
you were under the rulership. You were under the control yes. of that. She was subject to bleeding. Trail of years. Can you imagine such a life? And when it says the issue of blood, I can say her situation with the issue was with the issue of blood. It could not be the, the same issue with you. It could be the issue of job. It could be the issue of poverty. It could be the issue of people. People have always complaints against you. <laughs> it could be the issue with the relationships. Every relationship you engage into breaks up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you getting the point? It, it could be issue with finances. You get money, but you don't know where it goes. You don't know. It's, it could be issue. The different this this woman this issue was bleeding. But your issue could be different. But it is an issue. It needs Jesus to intervene. Yeah. It needs Jesus to come in. And the Bible says that she had been to many doctors. About the same issue. But instead of becoming better. She grew worse. But this woman never gave up. Trying. And this one day, Jesus is already turning towards the direction of Jairus' house. Jesus is not coming to this woman. No. Jesus is moving in a different direction. And here she shows up. And she says, according to the Bible, and she has thought to herself, that if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made. Oh, somebody give Jesus a clap offering. Thank you, my brother. If I can only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She believed that she doesn't even need to touch Jesus. But you know, the reason she said that was because Jesus was crowded with people. And she said, let me go as far as the clothes. <laughs> and then I will be made whole. Listen, nobody told her that she will be made whole. She told herself that she will be made whole. The Bible tells me she thought to herself. And I say, you know, she convinced herself. She told herself. She satisfied herself. Because before you convince yourself, you'll never convince anybody. <laughs> if you are doubting yourself, <laughs> everybody will doubt you. <laughs> but if you are convinced and you are convinced and you know and you know that you are a child of God, born of the blood of Jesus, born of the word and the spirit of God, and you are going to heaven, you will say, I am a child of God, I am a royal priesthood, I am a, a chosen generation, I am a conqueror, I am a winner, I am not going to die, I'm going to live and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I am a mountain mover, I am a shaker in the kingdom of God. You have convinced yourself, you will convince everybody else that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you were king in the kingdom of God. <laughs> How about that? She spoke to herself. <laughs> I tell people, if you have nobody to speak to, if you have nobody to preach to, if you have nobody to worship with, if you have nobody to sing to, preach to yourself, teach yourself, speak to yourself. Are you here? If you have nobody to prophesy to, prophesy to yourself. <laughs> prophesy to yourself. 
And she convinced herself. And she thought to herself. Amen. That if I can touch. The hem. Amen. Of his garment. It reminds me. Of the story. Of my own story. In early 90's. I have nobody to preach to. But I've got a message. Burning message. I'm praying all night. And I read the word of God. And I've got a message. And in the church. They are not allowing me to preach yet. But what I do, I'm not complaining. So I'm, uh, I'm digging in people's chambers with a small hole. You know a hole? You know, digging, digging. I'm digging for money so that I can, you know, to earn my living. You know, I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. And while I'm digging, there is a scripture boiling in my spirit. Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. And Jesus was in the house. And the power of God was present to heal the sick. Oh my God. And I say, where are the people for me to preach to? And the people are not there. But there is a bush. There is a jungle. And I say, I put the hoy down. And I say, you are not a jungle anymore. You are not a bush anymore. You are men and women. You are boys and girls. You are now people. I declare the word of God to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And I preach and I make an altar call. I bring people to the Lord. And then I say... You ushers, write their names. <laughs> and then I call the sick to come. The people with epilepsy, come forward. The lamb come. And I will release the healing power. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I have to propose to preach to. I preach to my bush. <laughs> but listen. Today. If I'm not in Uganda, I'm somewhere in Gold Coast preaching. I am somewhere in Sydney, in New York, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm all over Kampala. What is that? And she spoke to herself. Faith it does not only speak to others. Faith speaks to yourself. What about that psalm? You know, I'm not good at quoting scriptures, but I know how to, to mention. <laughs> you know... I know that they are there somewhere in the Bible. You know. <laughs> and then somebody say, and then you a bishop? Yes, by God's grace I am. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it says, uh, uh, the psalmist David says, you, you know, why are you downcast? Yes. Inside me, my soul. Arise and praise the Lord. <laughs> Give me a high five. Give me a high five. Come on. <laughs> Why are you downcast? My soul. Inside me. Preach to your soul. Prophesy to your soul. Sing to your soul. Read the word of God to your soul. <laughs> And she thought to herself that if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. And you know what? She began the move. Shukurabaya. She downloaded that thought. Have you ever been on a computer and you got a and you got an email which has got an attachment? And then you have to download. <laughs> and you have to download. <laughs> you know. <laughs> every wonderful, powerful thought begins in the mind. Comes in your brain. You have to download it. By faith into your heart. Because faith doesn't work, operate in the mind, in your brain. Faith operates in your heart. And when your, the God idea encounters faith, then there is an explosion. Oh, ma! You know, when she thought to herself that I can touch, she was downloading. Just today, I received an email from my trap agent in Uganda. I would say to her, you know, make this, you know, I want window seats all, all the way from Brisbane, all the way to Entebbe. Please make sure you do this and then send it to me. And she sent it to me, so I, I have to download it. <laughs> and then print it out. You need to download your thought from your mind to your heart, your, your mind to your heart. You have so many 
thoughts from God which you have never acted upon. And some of them are lying so dormant in your head for so long to the extent that you have forgotten them. <laughs> and then after some two years, three years later, somebody can, and then you say, oh, I thought about that. And she downloaded it. And then she began to move. And then we are reading that the woman, she pressed forward. But you know what? According to Bishop John University, she wasn't a woman walking. She was a thought walking. Are you getting the point? She was a walking thought. <laughs> no stop could stop this woman. She was a walking thought. And she started moving and pulling people and pressing on and pressing on. Pressing on. I remember many years ago, about seven years ago, I, I took a bus from Albany, New York. That is the state capital for New York. You know, all the way to Tushan, Arizona. <laughs> Three days and nights. <laughs> Shakataya. I'm enjoying America. <laughs> from one bus to another. From one bus to another. I'm pulling this bag and I'm pulling this one and I'm going. And sometimes I'm limping but I'm in America anyway. What are you doing Joey, in America on these buses? I have a thought. I am a walking thought. I have something to do at home. I have a dream to touch the nations of the world with the gospel of the kingdom of God. I have a dream to serve God worldwide. I am a vision pursuer. Yes. Yes. And I lost my bag. <laughs> Somewhere between Dallas and Arizona, my bag was no more. One of them. <laughs> Got to Arizona. And people said, where are you coming from, Joe? And I said, to uh, Albany, New York. All the way by bus? Yes, sir. There was no air tickets. There was no planes. No airplanes from there to here. <laughs> by the time this woman spoke to herself, when she looked around, there was nobody who could believe her yeah. if she speaks. Did you hear that? That's good. Sometimes, instead of speaking what is bleeding in your heart, it could be better to speak to God. And you maintain your faith. Instead of speaking out and many negatives hit you back. <laughs> this woman tells nobody. She presses on, presses on, presses on. And only people get to know about it after the wonderful results. How about that? That you keep something to your heart and you pursue and people don't know really what's going on with you. And indeed David tells me always that Joel, you know, you pursue, you build the school, you do your ministry, you build your church, you work. You know, some people will wake up one day and you already are there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm following after those principles. And it's working already in my life. Amen. And she pressed and she touched the garment of Jesus. And the Bible says, and power came out of the garment of Jesus. What a faith that unlocks power from the garment of Jesus. And the Bible says, Jesus turned around and began to ask, who has touched me? Would you pursue God until when God turns around to ask who has touched me? <laughs> who is following me? You know, this reminds me of, of the disciples of John. John, after declaring the day before that that's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, and then the following day, the Bible says, 
Jesus was walking and then Peter was with two of his, I mean, uh, I mean, John was with two of his disciples and said, Behold the Lamb of God. And two of his disciples left John and they went to Jesus. And Jesus asked them, What do you want? And they said, Rabbi, meaning we want to, we want to see where you live. But the Christians of today, to come in the presence of Jesus, and he ask you, what do you want? I mean, oh, I need another house. I need another car. I need another this. But these people were after something else. They wanted to see where Jesus is. They wanted to get the character of Jesus. You know, and Jesus tell them, come, you will see. And they saw something, you know, that night transformed them. The following day, they began to witness. They say, we have seen him, of him Moses in the law. And the prophet wrote about yeah. Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. Jesus, the son of David. You cannot come in encounter with Jesus and remain the same. Yeah. Power came out of Jesus and hit this woman and the bleeding stopped and she sneaked away. And Jesus began to look around. Who is touching me? Who has touched me? And the disciples of Jesus said, you see that everybody is pressing on you and you ask such a question. And Jesus continued to look and the Bible says, and, Jesus, and the woman came back and she was trembling. And she told him all the truth. All the truth. But something amazing there is that something was going on between Jesus and this woman. <laughs> Let me tell you, in your walk with God, on the outside, people may not see that you are growing. On the outside, we may not see what God is doing. But on the inside, God is doing something. On the inside, there is a work that is going on. If you continue in the move with God, if you continue with the scriptures, if you continue coming to church, if you continue in the pursuit with God, I guarantee you something is taking place in the spiritual realm in your life. And one time, one day, there's going to be an explosion of the move of God. And then suddenly, everybody on the God coast will turn around and say, Hey, God is moving in his life. Something was going on. Quietly. 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 You know, it was the woman knew and Jesus knew, but even Peter didn't know. The woman knew, Jesus knew, but even the surrounding, the closest disciples around Jesus did know. Let me assure you, God is doing something between you and him. But even some people that are too close, they don't know what God is doing. But he's busy doing something in your life, in your family. Oh, hallelujah to God. And the Bible says, and she trembled on her feet and told him all the truth. And Jesus said to her, daughter, be freed from your suffering. Go in peace. You are freed from your suffering. Today, when I pray with you, I'll declare and say, daughter, son of God, you are freed from your suffering. Go in peace. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, today, when you come forward and we are praying with you, we shall declare in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, you are freed from your suffering. Walk in peace. Your faith has made you whole. Somebody say amen. amen. In the beginning of the story, in chapter in verse 25, the Bible says, A woman was there. I love it in the closing, closing of the story. The Bible, Bible says, says Jesus, Jesus said, daughter. The, the two, two are different. different. It, it says woman, woman was, was there. there. Thank, Thank you. you. Which, which, which one, one do you take? 
Daughter. Daughter. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are not just a, a foreigner in the kingdom of God. You are not a Gentile anymore in the presence of God. You are a daughter. You are a son. In the, you are part of the family. We are part of the family. Since we accepted the man of Calvary, or the one who was hung in the middle cross on Calvary cross, we are part of the family of the children of God. We are not just a woman that was there. We are not just a man who came around. We are sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. Somebody shout hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We walk boldly in the presence of God and we say, Heavenly Father, here I am. I am your son. I believe that you are ready to move in Australia today. It's such a wonderful shining morning. It's winter time, but you have given us a wonderful sun today. I believe to see the mighty move of God in the land of the living as your son. Hallelujah to God. And Jesus says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. What a faith that translates her from just a mere woman to a daughter of Jesus. That's what faith does. 